Today I've got a nice problem which was on a Puerto Rican math Olympiad in 2014. So in order to state the problem, we need to introduce some notation, and this notation was introduced on the exam. So let's suppose that when writing a number down, we can subscript a number to indicate how many times it's repeated in its decimal representation. So for some examples, the number 4 sub 3, 5 sub 2 would be 4, 4, 4, 5, 5. Notice 4 is repeated 3 times and 5 is repeated 2 times. And then the number 2 sub 2, 3 sub 4, 7 sub 2 would be 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 7, 7. So let's see, in the end, what number would this be? It would be like 22,333,377. Then our final goal is to find all numbers x, y, and z so that the following equation holds. We have 2 sub x, 3 sub y, 5 sub z, plus 3 sub z, 5 sub x, 2 sub y, equals 5 sub 3, 7 sub 2, 8 sub 3, 5 sub 1, 7 sub 3. So that's quite a big number. Notice we've got three fives, two sevens, three eights, one five, and then ending with three sevens. Okay, so let's note first of all how many digits are in the right hand side. So the right hand side has, well let's see, three plus two plus three plus one plus three total digits. So that's going to be 3 plus 1, which is 4, plus another 3, which is uh, 7, and then plus that 5 makes 12. So it has 12 digits. And let's also notice, by the way, the left-hand side of the equation is built, there's not really going to be any carrying. Well, that's not totally true. There could be some carrying by the fives adding with the fives, but notice to the far left of each of these numbers, there won't be any carrying to create more digits than just x plus y plus z in each. So notice this, this number has x plus y plus z digits, and this number also has x plus y plus z digits. And like I said, because of how these digits are ordered, it's clear, I would say, that there won't be any carrying to create more digits than that. Okay, so what does that tell us? That tells us that the whole left-hand side has x plus y plus z total digits, giving us our first equation for x, y, and z. So we have x plus y plus z equals 12. So that's obviously not enough to completely solve for x, y, and z, but it's at least a good start. Okay, so now let's hone in on what's happening with this very last digit here. So that very last digit is 7, and there are three 7s. Then the last digit here is two, the last digit here is five. And so in order to achieve three sevens, we have to have at least three fives and at least three twos. So what does that tell us? That tells us that three is going to be less than or equal to y and z, because this has z fives and this one has y twos. But we could maybe put this all together and say that 3 is equal to the minimum of y and z. And we know that both y and z can't be strictly larger than 3 because then we'd have more than 3 7s. Like, for instance, if they were both equal to 4, then we would have 4 7s. So one of them must be equal to 3. And so that breaks, breaks it down into following cases. So case number 1 would be z equals 3, whereas case number 2 would be y equals 3. So let's see what each of those gives us. So this first case when z equals 3, so what we'll do is subtract 777 from both sides of the equation. But in this side of the equation, we'll subtract 2, 2, 2, and then here we'll subtract 5, 5, 5. So we'll split it up. 
So that's going to give us a new equation. Okay, so subtracting 5, 5, 5 from this will give us 2 sub x, 3 sub y, and then we'll have three zeros. But we'll actually have three zeros at the end of all of these numbers, so we can just divide by like a thousand, and that'll create a new equation. Okay, so after subtracting two, two, two from here, where we will be left with some twos, but the number of twos we'll be left with is y minus three, because we've subtracted off three of them. So this is gonna be plus three z five x, and then two y minus three. Okay, and then on the right-hand side of the equation, we'll have five sub three, seven sub two, eight sub three, and then five sub one. And I just wanna reiterate that this is not exactly what happens after we subtract these numbers. This is what happens after we subtract these numbers and then clear the zeros that are left over. Okay, so now we've got this going on. And now we wanna hone in on the last digit. So notice the last digit here is five, and there's only one of them. But that means that there must be only one three and there must be only one two. But that means that one must be the minimum of y and y minus three, using a similar argument to what we did right here. But we know the minimum of y and y minus 3, and that's y minus 3, because y minus 3 is clearly smaller. And that gives us y minus 3 equals 1. In other words, y equals 4. Okay, so let's see. If z is equal to 3, we've just determined that y is equal to 4. And then using this equation right here that I've boxed in blue, that means that z is equal to 5 because we need their sum to be 12. And so what's left is to check that this is a solution. But maybe before we check if this is a solution, let's work through this second case to see if that gives us a potential solution as well. Hey everyone out there in YouTube land, just wanted to take a minute to plug the Patreon. Patreon is a great way for viewers like you to get more involved in the community and earn awesome rewards, like live access to the Patreon seminar series, exclusive Discord perks, and early access to some videos. I'm really psyched about the power of this community to enact change for the betterment of math education, and we're well on our way to achieving our $1,000 per month goal. Thanks for all your support, and now back to the video. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the second case when y is equal to three. So we'll do the same thing that we did before. We'll subtract 555 and 222 from this first sum and and the second sum and and s subtract 777 from the right hand side of the equation. And then we'll clear the zeros. So let's see, that's going to leave us with 2 sub x, 3 sub y, and then 5z minus 3. Remember, in this case, z is bigger than or equal to y, given the fact that y is achieving this minimum value of y and z. Okay, and then for this second term, we'll have 3 sub z, 5 sub x, we took out that two sub y by subtracting two, 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 and then dividing by a thousand. And then over here, we have five sub three, seven sub two, eight sub three, five sub one. But now there are a bunch of things wrong with this equation. So first of all, if x is not equal to zero, then if we add this five that's ending here with a five that's ending here, we won't end up with a five in the ones place. And you might say, well, what if the z minus three is zero, so this doesn't end in a five? Well, if this doesn't end in a five, well, then the five is gonna be adding into the three, but if the five is adding into the three, we also won't achieve a five over here. And you can do a similar argument starting with this first sum. So all in all, what we see is that the structure of these two terms here make it impossible to end with a five here. So that means that this second case is indeed not possible at all, which means that if we have a solution, which we still need to check, 
Then these are the values of X, Y, and Z. And I just realized that should have been an X because our Z was equal to three. Okay, so now let's maybe go ahead and check that solution. So far we've shown that X equals five, Y equals four, and Z equals three is the only possible solution. Now we'll check that it is a solution. So let's see, if x equals five, then this first number starts with five twos. So we have two, 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 two. Then if y is equal to four, we have four threes, three, 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 three. And if z is equal to three, we have three fives. So five, five, five. And now I'm just gonna stack these and add them like you would do in grade school. Okay, so if we have three sub z here, that means we're gonna have three threes, so three, three, three. And then we've got five sub x, so that's five fives. So five, 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 five. Great, and then we've got two sub y, so that's gonna be four twos. So five plus two is seven, and we have three of those in a row. Three plus two is five. Three plus five is eight. We've got some of those in a row as well. Two plus five is seven again, and then three plus two is five. Great, and now let's check how many of these there are. So there are three fives in a row right here, two sevens, there are three eights, here there's one five, and here there are three sevens. But does that match our subscripts here? Well, it does. We've got three, two, three, one, three. So that's good. So that means our possible solution is a solution. So I think this is a pretty nice problem. And I'm going to leave you with a bit of a challenge. And that is to create a problem which is similar to this that maybe has more than one solution, if you think that's possible. Maybe post it in the comments. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.